In this video, we're going to take a look at what is probably the holy grail of modeling, which is creating faces, which are very, very hard to do. So what I'm going to do is show you a technique that you can get quick results using Carveco Maker Plus. And this is the face that I'm going to be creating. Now, Couple of caveats. Firstly, I'm not an artist, I'm an engineer. And if you want this to be absolutely perfect, you need to have some skill. Secondly, I'm doing this really, really quick. This particular image or relief that I created, it, it took about probably half an hour to create. Now, if you were doing, say, a minting face, you just keep on changing things, keep on sculpting until it looked perfect. So I'm just showing you a real, real quick way of how to do a face. I'll give you a few tips along the way. So I'm going to be doing this guy here. If I take a look in the 2D view, and let's just delete these vectors, just so you can take a look at it. So it's this guy's face, basically. Now, a couple of things. When you get the image, First of all, make sure that you've got a pretty decent resolution image. If you've got something that's really small, it's just not going to work. The reason being is that this method basically uses the image as a texture to create most of the detail. So if I zoom in on this guy's face, you can see that there are parts where it's all sort of blurred out, where the colors have merged into each other. But you've got lots of detail in here still. For instance, on the beard here. So he's got all this stubble. It's really, really good for men because they have stubble. It's a little bit harder to do women because generally they have smoother skin, which means that there's not much texture when you try to do the image from it. Now, another thing to bear in mind, this face is taking up a large portion of the image. So that's what you want. You want it to be taking up a large portion of the image. If it's just a small portion in the background, then the resolution is going to be absolutely rubbish and it's not going to work properly. So let me show you what I mean. So here you can see I've got this image. Let's bring that into the software. I'm not going to save the changes and I'll just leave it at the default values like that. Now, if I take a look in the 2D view, so you can see I've got these four people here. And let's say this lady down here that's sitting down. I want to create her face. Now, if I zoom in there, you can see that it's just a blur of pixels. So if I were to try and create this as a texture, it just would look rubbish. Okay, so make sure that you've got the right sort of image, first of all. So even this image here or this person here it's just not going to look right now partly that is because it's quite low resolution so if you take a look over here it's only in one direction 378 pixels so the image is actually really really small so it's only 161 kilobytes so this one that i have it's actually 16 megabytes so it's got a lot more information in there so let me drag that into the software and create a new model. So I'll do this in inches and maybe let's give it a width of 12 inches. Let's set my origin, doesn't really matter too much. I'll put it in the center and then select OK. Now, if you get this message, this just means that the actual image is higher than the 2000 by 2000 pixels that you're allowed in Carveco Maker or Maker Plus. So click OK, and then you can see that it, it has given you a little bit larger, but it's, it's basically 2000 by 2000 pixels. Right, so the hardest thing about this is creating the vectors, okay? So what you need to do is imagine the high areas and the areas that you want sunk in on the face. So if I zoom in and take a look at it, let's 
for looking in the 2D view, actually. You can see the eyes that are a little bit sunk in. The nose, obviously, is sticking forwards. There's the cheekbones that are sticking forward, the top of the brow that's sticking forward. So you have to bear all of these in mind and you have to create the vectors to basically add this material onto it. So first of all, let's create some vectors. So I'm going to do all of these vectors. So before in the wolf demo and the badge demo, I brought in pre-generated vectors. I'm just going to do all of these vectors. So if I follow around the outside of this, now obviously you would do this a lot better than what I'm doing. I'm going to do this quite quick. And I'm going to press minus on the keyboard and make sure that I've got draw smooth polylines turned on. Let's zoom in there. Let's turn that up just a touch so I can see it a bit better. And then I'm just going to follow this guy's head. So now you have to use your imagination here. So you see how I'm going over the top of the hair. I'm basically imagining his skull. So let's follow this all the way around. Like so. Okay, so that's the basis of our vectors. And they're going to create another vector and I'm going to do this for the hair. Now, you see how there's all these little bits of hair, this, these little strands coming out. You're not going to be able to do that, so don't worry about that. There's no way that you can really do that unless you zoom in and then literally trace manually over each one of those hairs, which would take you ages. So I'm not going to bother doing that. So what I'm going to do is just go around like that and just follow this guy's hair over this side. And then where it's got the parting, I'm going to come over and I'm going to go into the top of the brow, like so. Now, if you make a mistake or you want to change something, just come out of the polyline tool, go into node editing. You can see this is coming over a bit far. I'm just going to bring that in like that, move that maybe, and I can bring that in. So you can just edit it later. In case so that looks okay. Right, now let's do the same for the other side of the hair. So I'm going to go around there like that. Now, if you make a mistake, just press minus on the keyboard and it will go back a step. So you can see there that I'm touching. Maybe I don't want it to touch. Maybe I want it to come like that. So just follow it around, let's say like that. Okay, so that's the hair. Let's do the ear. Now don't worry if they're overlapping. What we're going to do is blend all this in when we use the tool to create the relief work. Okay, so this is now where you need to really think about it. You need to, the hardest part is knowing where to create vectors and where you want to raise and where you want to lower. So what we're going to do is for the eyes, definitely want to lower that. So if I basically create an eye socket, like so, and also do the same over this side, and we want to have this lower. So if we keep on going around like that, you can see that that's lower. Now we want the brow to be higher. So if we maybe have that coming around there, now don't worry if it's not perfect. What we're going to do is smooth this all out afterwards. So let's maybe follow that. And bring it up to there. Let's do the same thing here. I'm not too bothered about this overlapping. We'll sort that out later. It's all going to be smoothed anyway. Then we want the cheeks. So let's do a big one here. Let's see what, let's undo that. Let's have it coming up there. 
I'll have that following that around like that. Let's follow this sort of crease line here. Okay, and then over this side, maybe not have that so close. So I have that like that. Okay, and then let's follow that around there. Let's say about there. Let's bring that down. So about there. Let's do the nose. So maybe like that. I'm not going to bother going inside the nose there for the nostrils. So all that we're doing here really is just adding material. Okay, and these are the vectors that we're going to use to do it. Now, sometimes you can't see what's going on. So I can't see what's going on with the eye here. So you literally just need to use your imagination. So let's go around there. Like so, and then let's just do the eyelids. Now, if you want to, you can add the pupils. I'm not going to bother with that. That's probably the hardest thing is the pupils of the eye because it's very, very easy to make it look weird and sort of go into that uncanny valley sort of territory. So be a bit careful with that. So let's add this. I'm just going to go around, join that back up. Do the same here for the inside. Join that back up. Okay. Now I need to have this chin here. So let's make that a bit larger. Like so. And then finally the lips. So what you want to do is go over the lips. And let me zoom in because I don't want much of a round edge there. So let's go like that. And then I'll just do the same thing here. Just a little touch there. And then it will go in. Let's go around. Now this may have suddenly become a bit jerky because... <laughs> We've just had a power cut <laughs> where I live and I'm having to do this on battery now. Okay, so if it looks a little bit jerky when I'm creating this, that's the reason. Right, now I don't like that curve, so let's node edit that. I'm going to delete that and let's delete that as well. Drop that down, move that around just a touch. Okay, that looks better. Okay, so this guy is now ready to be modelled. Okay, so let's go to the 3D view and let's turn on the material, turn on the vectors. So I've just got these vectors. Right, so what you need to do is in your head, Imagine what parts that you want sticking up and what parts you want to be sunk in. Now, almost all of these, I want them to be sticking up. Okay, so I'm adding material. The only place that I really want to be removing material is on the eye sockets because I want them to be sunk in a little bit. Right, so let's start modelling this. Now, when you do start modeling this, make sure that your resolution is quite good. If you have imported an image and the resolution is quite low, this is the time to make it larger because whatever you create now, it's going to look jagged and not very good if you've got a low resolution. So if you do have a low resolution, go to model and adjust resolution and crank it up. So let's select the outside vector there and I'm going to open up the shape editor. When you open this up, you can see all of the dots going around there or all of the nodes. 
I strongly suggest that you watch the shape editor video that I created for Maker Plus. It explains all of the combined modes. It explains all of the options that are available in it. So I'm going to assume that you know how to do that. Right, now I'll show you what not to do to start off with, okay? So let's create a round dome, okay? And let's just apply it. Okay, so that's created this round dome. Okay, now this is what most people would do to start with. This isn't right. So what you would do, let's say that I wanted to add these cheeks. Let's say, let's say that cheek. So let's go to the shape editor again. I'm going to add a round. Let's say about there. Then turn off the vectors. You can see that it, it, it just doesn't look right. It's, it's too much. So the key to this is subtlety. Okay, now if you were to add that and then add the texture on afterwards, it just wouldn't look right because the face doesn't look that rounded or it doesn't have these parts that stick out so much. So let's cancel that. Now, if you do make a mistake, you can undo. And what this will do, it will take you through the options in the shape editor that you've done. So if you keep on undoing, it will take you back through all of these operations that you've done. So I can turn on the vectors again, and then it's taking me back to there. So just keep on undoing it if you make a mistake. So let's do a round, but this time I'm going to do this really, really small, let's say five. So you can see that it's hardly adding anything to that. And the star type, I don't know, let's make it, let's say a quarter of an inch maybe. It's probably a bit too much. Let's say an eighth of an inch. And then select apply. So this is added material and it's also added a slight dome onto the top. That's the sort of thing that you want to do. Okay, now as I said, start from pretty much the back first. In this example, this hair here is the back, but I'm not going to worry about that. Let's just do that now. So let's do a round on that. You need to drop that down again. I tend to do these about five as the angle. And you can see that you get this sort of blend line in here. Now, if I were to merge high that, then I wouldn't get where it adds over the top of there. And that's the sort of thing that I want for the hair. So select apply for that. Let's take a look at this hair. Do a round again. Do it about five again. Let's turn that off. Now I want this to go sort of over the top. Now the, the way that I can do that is to add the start height to it. So this section of the hair, that was lying underneath. So if you want to take a look, you can just turn on the bitmap and take a look. So this hair, I want it to be at the forefront. This hair I weren't too bothered about. I wanted it to be at the back. So let's take a look there. Let's add a start height to it. Let's say 0.1. And make sure that I'm on merge height. If you've got that set to add, you see how it adds onto the top of it. Don't want that at all. So let's say 0 0.1. 0 0.125. Let's Let's try it about 0 0.13, 0 0.14. Now the great thing about this, you can just do it all in real time and it just instantly updates and you can just see exactly what's happening. So let's say 0 0.16 and apply that. Now if you make a mistake, just undo it. Let's turn on the vectors again and I'm going to zoom out and let's take a look at the ear. So let's select the ear, do a round, and maybe this time I want it to come the opposite way. So let's do this as a negative. Now, again, I don't want to go too crazy with this. Let's say minus five. And let's rotate around so we can see it. Okay, so that's sunk in. What I need to do is lift this up. So if I do a height of 0.1, let's say, 
there you can see it's lying underneath this guy's face. Now, I don't actually know how it's supposed to look. So let's turn off the vectors. Let's take a plan view. Okay, so I reckon that will be okay. So let's rotate it around. Let's apply that. Now, if you make a mistake, you can always redo it. Now, I can see this hair. I haven't done it very high. Right, so what you can do with this is you can just edit it afterwards. So you can see I've selected the area that I created the relief. And what I can do is it automatically remembers what was in there. So now I can just add the star type and bring it up. So let's say 0.1. Like so, let's turn off the vectors, take a look at it. That looks okay, to be honest, that was a pretty good guess. So let's turn the vectors back on and apply. Let's take a plan view just so I know where I am. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these eye sockets that I have here, do a round on those. Let's do them at negative five, let's say. So you can see that I'm doing this really subtle, not really going mad with this. And you can see that it's not doing anything. So that's because I'm set to merge high. I need to set it to add. And then you can see it's sunk in. Now, as I said previously, I'm not an artist and this is just a really, really quick way on how to do this. So. If you want to spend a lot more time doing it, you get much, much better results. I'm just showing you a real quick way to do it. So let's select apply. Turn on the vectors again. And then I'm going to select that, select that, select that, that, and that. And I'm going to do these as rounds. Now you can see here, if you go too crazy, it just looks weird. Okay. So Let's do this about five again. Just add that onto the top like so. Now, don't worry about where these overlap. We're going to smooth all that out afterwards anyway. So apply that. Turn the vectors back on. Let's have a look at the nose. Do a round one on that. Now, obviously, I don't want the nose to be too large, but maybe do this one, let's say 10, just so it comes to the forefront and then apply that. Turn on the vectors again, and then let's select that one, that one, that one, and that one for the eyelids. Let's do a round on that, bring that down. Maybe about 10 on this as well. Let's say, make sure that you set to add and apply. Turn the vectors back on and then select the lips. And I'm going to do these a little bit larger, I think. Maybe about 20, let's say. Just turn that off so you can take a look. Maybe a little bit too much. Let's try it a bit there. And then select apply. Then you can close it. Let's take a look at the vectors, make sure that I've not missed anything. Okay, so that looks okay. Now, if I turn off the vectors, you can see that it looks a bit weird at the moment. So what we need to do is smooth this out. Okay, now what we can do is go to the smoothing and just do this basically where you think it is supposed to be. Or what I like to do is to turn the image on so I can see it. And you can sort of see where the high spots are supposed to be and where they're not supposed to be. So I can see here, I need to sort this out. The brow is a little bit too high. You can sort of see where it looks weird. So if we go to smooth, and I'll put the radius down, let's say to about, let's say about 50. I'll keep the strength at 10 just to start with, just so we can take a look at this. So I'm going to smooth out this the hairline, like so. I'll probably need to do this a lot more. OK, 
Okay, so I'm just smoothing this down. I want this to smooth right into the top. So I need to get rid of this ridge that I've got here. Okay, now if you need to, you can drop the image down like that. I'll just go over this quickly here at the top and then do the same here. Now, obviously, you would spend a lot longer doing this. I'm doing this really, really quick. And as I said, just showing you a real quick way to do stuff like this. This is sort of the hardest thing that you can do in any sort of modeling package like this. Okay, let's do around here. Let's do around the bottom, just blend it in. Doing this really quick and it's probably at a really, really high strength. You can see the chin here. See how I'm just blending that in nicely there. And also on the cheek here, you'll start to see the material sort of be removed. You sort of get the right sort of creases that you want. So let's get rid of that. And then let's blend that in there. Do the same on the nose. Let's blend this in. Now, if you need to rotate around, you can see that's giving me a really nice crease there. Let's blend this in. And blend this in here. Okay, so what I'm doing here, I'm just holding the mouse down and going over it. And then let's do these eye sockets. And the eyes. Just do a quick blend over there. And then smooth this in. Now the hardest bit, let's just do this bit. The hardest bit is the nose and the brow here. So what I'm going to do for that is just go up and down on the nose just to blend it into the forehead. Like so, and you can see it's slowly starting to blend out. And then let's do the same on the brow here. Let's just blend this in here. Like so. Okay. And then at the top here. Now don't worry that we've gone over the edge, we'll sort that out later. Okay, and as I said, I'm not an artist, and you're gonna see that in a moment when I turn this into the material. Right, so that looks okay. Maybe the lips, the lips are a bit too harsh at the moment. So let's smooth those out. So as I said, I'm just showing you a quick way to do this. Okay, so that doesn't look too bad as far as I'm concerned. It looks okay. Right, so let's close that. Now, if you did need to create any more creases, you can always just use the carving tool. So if I were to go in here, let's say, I could just create a crease in there, and carve it out, and then just smooth that out again. It gives you that crease, okay? And you could do the same for the eyes. It, honestly, it just depends how much time you want to spend on this. You could also do it for the eyebrows so you could start carving and then you can start smoothing it exactly the same for the hair it just depends on how much time you want to spend on it now as i said before i'm not an artist and i'm showing you a real quick way to do it so word of warning when i turn this back to the material this is going to look absolutely awful okay and it's not going to look good whatsoever so let's go back to the material. Now, I love seeing stuff like this. It just cracks me up every time. So let's go to display material. And you can see that this guy just looks absolutely rubbish. It actually looks better than the ones that I've done previously, to be completely honest with you. But it looks rubbish. Now, the whole 
the thing with this is using the image to create a texture that goes over the top of it, and that's what adds to the realism. That's what gives it the look that it's actually a proper relief. So you could do that, first of all, when you first start. You could create the texture from the image if you want to, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to do it now. So what I need to do is I need to basically get rid of this relief. I don't want it on the screen to start with. Now to do that, if you click here, relief cookie cutter, make sure that you haven't got a vector selected because otherwise it will do it within that vector. And then select relief cookie cutter and that basically frees up the relief. Now you don't want to move this because you won't know where it's supposed to go in the image. And then you have to move it back manually and that will be a pain. So don't do anything. Deselect it. And then if you click this button, this toggles the clip art visibility and it turns it off. And then you can turn off the vectors as well while you're at it. Okay. Right. So now what you can do is take a plan view of that and I'll turn up the contrast again. Now what you can do is create the texture or create a relief from an image. So basic stuff, go right click, face a businessman. Now you may have seen in the past, go to relief, import and import, and you import the image. Don't do that. Right click on the bitmap, create relief. Now when you do that, if I rotate around, it starts off at an absolutely crazy height. So you can see it's 408 inches, which isn't any use to anyone. So let's knock that down. So let's make it, let's say, a quarter of an inch. Now, what I'm going to do here is make it quite large to start with. So let's make it, I don't know, let's say, let's say about half an inch or something and apply. And then if I cancel it, you can see it's created the relief. And now what I can do is do a global smoothing on that because it, it doesn't look the best at the moment. So let's smooth relief. Keep on smoothing. Let's take a plan view of it. Let's smooth it quite a bit more. Now you don't want to smooth it too much. Maybe about there and apply and cancel. And the only reason that I'd done that, it was just basically so I could see it. So you can scale the relief back down there. So if I bring that down and you want it really, really tiny. So here you can see that's 28 foul. So probably about it really just so you get all the, of the detail in there so maybe let's make it 20 fair so let's put that at zero and then apply now if you had a relief that would work you could also emboss it and that would give you more detail but i'm not going to bother doing it for this so apply and cancel and you can see i've got this really really low lying relief so what I need to do is put this onto what I've already created. So what I need to do is turn on the clip art, go to transform, and then I need to make sure that I've got this set to add. If I haven't, and I just paste that down, it just goes over the top of that texture. So if I undo that, go to transform, make sure that I've got this set to add. Now I could have freed up the background as well and created a piece of floating clip art with that and then pasted that down it's entirely up to you so make sure that you've got that set to add and then paste and then it adds it onto the top of it right now we're getting somewhere so now we've got this guy here and you can see we've got the hair we've got all of this on his beard let's say for instance what you can start doing now is smoothing this out so if you go to smooth again now again this is entirely 
as good as however long you want to spend on it. So let's do the strength of 10, bring that down, maybe make it a bit larger. And then what you can do is start smoothing this out. So the areas that you think are supposed to be a bit smooth, start smoothing it out. So let me go over all of these, like so. Now, as I said, you could do the eyebrows, you could start sculpting those. You can see the nose here. It's a bit unsmooth. Like so. Smooth out the beard just a touch. Like that. Smooth out this side of the cheek. Now the eyes are the hardest part. As I said, if you get those wrong, it can start to look really weird. Okay, let's smooth out this guy's forehead. Now you can see that the crease lines are sort of going. Now I'll show you how you can get those back. Sort out his hair. Maybe smooth those. And then you can carve into the hair, make it come back if you want to. Okay, so let's bring some of those crease lines back. So let's bring the radius down and then just literally follow the lines. Like so. And then you can smooth those out again. Now you could do that with the whole of the model if you had time. Okay, especially around the eyelids. So you can see that it's given me those crease lines. Okay, and then you could start carving out the hair as well. So you can see here, start carving out the hair. Now I'll only do this portion here, just so you can see what it looks like. Now you can also add material if you wanted to. So let me just move it out. You can see you can slowly build up creating the hair. So if you wanted to do the hair completely from scratch, you could do that if you wanted to. Okay, so let's say that I'm happy with this guy. And, you know, this has taken like probably half an hour to do this. And it's pretty good. I'm quite happy with it. It's actually better than the one that I've done previously. So let's turn on the vectors. Now, if you want to, I would create a copy of these and move them to a new layer. But I know that I'm not going to use these again, so I'm not too bothered. Now, at the top here, I can see that I've got a gap. Now, what I'm going to do is just draw a circle here, like so. Now, the reason for that is that I'm going to create an outline of this. So let's select both of those, and let's select the ear, and let's select that face. So what I'm going to do now is right-click and weld them, just so it gives me an outline. And what I'm going to do with that outline is I'm going to zero everything on the outside. Now, if you wanted to do the suit, let's say, then you would do the same process as previously and then add the texture onto what you've already created. So what I'm going to do is zero the outside of this. So if I select here, zero outside vector, that gets rid of all the material outside. I can turn the vectors off and there you can see that I've got my face and I'm pretty happy with that considering that it only took a little while to do this is as I said the holy grail of relief modeling trying to create faces okay so what am I going to do with this I don't want it this size I don't even know what size this actually is so let's say I save this and I wanted to use it later. And I don't know, let's say that I only want this to be four inches high. 
and I haven't got a clue what the size is at the moment. So what I want to do is resize it to a different size model. So to do that, what we do is use the relief cookie cutter. That will free up the model and then you can move it around wherever you like. Let's say that I've moved that off the screen and don't worry about it. Let's delete the vectors. I'm not going to use those again because I'm happy with the model. Now, let's say that I want to make this smaller. So what I can do is put that in the center like so. Now, just because this model is quite large, I can still machine it just to a vector or I'll show you how to make the actual model smaller. So let's go to transform and the height, I want this to be four and then apply. So that's four inches now. And then I can paste that down. Okay, and then what I can do if I wanted to, I can change the height of that, bring it up or down. Let's say that I want this to actually be half an inch high, like that, and then cancel. So that's half an inch in height now. Now, if I wanted to, what I can do is draw a box around that, like so. And then what I can do is go to Model and Crop. Now, when you do that, what you need to be wary of is that it does affect the resolution. Now, it's not going to affect this particular piece because we've already dropped the resolution down because we made it smaller. So that's just something to bear in mind, but just don't worry about it. And let's just double check where the origin is. So it's still in the center. Okay, so just make sure that you double check where that origin is. If you need to change it, go to model, set position, and then choose where you want it to be. So if I want it to be bottom left, select bottom left and OK. And then it changes to the bottom left. OK, so that's how you create faces from images within Carve Code Maker Plus. I hope that you found it useful and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Bye.